YouTube. Today we're going to go over Sokolsky's opening, um, also known as the Polish opening, basically 1b4. The idea behind 1b4 is white wants to control the center from a distance with the move bishop b2. This opening is actually very similar to another hypermodern opening called Larsen's opening, which starts with 1b3. The two major differences being that number one, 1b4 in some ways is, is more ambitious because it's trying to control the center without allowing black to defend the e5 square with the move knight c6. And it's also more dangerous because you're also creating more weak squares in white's camp. And 1b4 is actually a, a, more, a more offbeat move than 1b3. So 1b3 is actually considered somewhat safer, according to theory. But here, let's just go right into the theory. So after 1b4, e5 is black's most logical reply. Black wants to place a pawn in the center of the board right where white tries to control it. Bishop b2 is white's normal response, putting this bishop in the center of the board, attacking this pawn. At this point, black has two options. Black can allow white to capture this pawn, or black can simply try to defend it. Um, if black tries to defend it, he can not defend it with the move knight c6, because after the move knight to c6, b5, knight e5, he would actually lose the pawn after e3, since the bishop is defending this pawn on b5, the knight would have to retreat and then simply bishop captures pawn, and in this position, white is simply up a pawn and it's simply better. So knight c6 not being possible, leaves black with two options to attempt to defend this pawn. The first option is black could play the move f6. After the move f6, white would actually switch gears. White would play the move e4. This is a move that Fischer actually played when he faced the move f6. The point being is that in e-pawn openings, the move f6 really isn't all that good. So then that sacrifices this pawn. Black gets to play bishop captures b4, but then white takes control of the light scores with bishop c4. Now, what white actually intends to do here is white actually intends to play sort of a king's gambit hybrid system, which will give white a huge attack considering that black has thrown in this weak f6 move, and this diagonal is extremely weak. After white continues with moves like, say, f4, and then at some point queen h5, and then possibly knight f3 to h4, White's position is very weak, and it's nearly indefensible. And Fischer actually won a very nice game with the white pieces in a simultaneous exhibition playing this exact variation, and it hasn't been revisited very much simply because of that. The other option to defend this pawn is the move d6. Now, this is kind of interesting. Against d6, we actually don't want to play e4. The reason we don't want to play e4 is oftentimes d6 will actually run into the move after e4, we can run into the move a5. The whole point of d6 is black wants to play a types of king's Indian defense structure where the knight typically goes to d7, this knight goes to f6, g6, bishop g7, and castles. If this structure occurs, we would very much like to plant white pawns on e4 and b5, or we have free reign over the square c5. At this point, black would have a strategically much stronger position if this pawn ends up on e4. This is why typically after d6 controlling the e5 square, white will typically take the other strategy, which is to play e3 and d4. And that way black does not get control of the square c5, and white manages to keep a firm grip on the center of the board and can continue developing his pieces naturally. These types of positions are usually considered relatively level, and it's about an even game for both sides, if both sides have a pretty firm grip on what their clients are. Finally, we run into a more modern idea, which is after b4, e5, bishop, b2, what black can actually offer um, white at this point. This is a more modern idea because back when this opening first started getting played, people thought that this idea of allowing white to capture on e5 wasn't very good because it uh, gave white this very small positional advantage. After bishop takes b4, bishop e5, knight f6, you've actually exchanged a wing pawn for a central pawn which gives white a three to two pawn majority in the center of the board, and it allows white to have a future advantage in the middle of the board, similar to advantages that you would see out of, say, a Sicilian defense for the black side. In this case, though, it, it turns out that it's actually, um, actually kind of difficult for white to activate this majority, and there was one particular line that was giving white headaches for the longest time, and that, white, and, and that line proceeded after knight f3, d5, e3, Castles kingside, bishop e2, 
c5. Notice that white can't play d4 in this position because of this temporary pin, nor has he been able to play d4 in this position for the last several moves. After castles, black will finally play knight c6. We can finally play d4 here, but in this case, white doesn't want to do it at the expense of losing his bishop pair, so he's forced to retreat his bishop. g3 is a better retreat square than b2 in this case, and you'll see why in one more move, because black continues with the move d4. This basically nullifies white's pawn majority in the center of the board. Even though white has a pawn majority, he's unable to activate it. And because of this, black's position is probably a little bit stronger here. Black has more space, black has more freedom of movement, and black is doing a little bit better. And this was actually putting a stop to the Polish for many years. And there were actually quite a few Polish players that were getting in even worse trouble because they weren't retreating the bishop to g3, they were retreating the bishop to b2. And in this situation, the bishop ends up getting trapped on this side of the board, and the king side becomes extremely, extremely weak. In this case, the position is very good for black, because black has a typical isolated queen pawn attack, where he will play bishop a5, bishop c7, continue with moves like bishop g4, rook e8, queen d6, and if these pawns get exchanged, you can see this is an isolated queen pawn, and he gets this typical attack against the white king that's very, very difficult to meet and very difficult to stop and all of black's pieces can come into this attack and all of black's pieces can get involved. And this was really putting um, this opening to shame for several years to where the best practitioners were having a very difficult time playing it. However, there is an alternative to this strategy if you want to take up this opening as white. After the move bishop b2, bishop takes b4, bishop takes e5, knight f6, your best move here is the immediate c4. After the immediate c4, it's not really possible for black to play an immediate d5, c5, and d4, because as soon as the pawn comes to d5, he can simply play c captures d5, and you'll still have some type of pawn majority in the center that can be used. And then you can proceed to finish your development with moves like e3, knight f3, bishop e2, castles kingside, and then finally d4. And again, when the bishop is attacked, it will likely retreat to g3 instead of b2. Although in this case, b2 is a slightly more viable option because you could then move this pawn to d3 instead of d4 if you wanted to. So this is a totally reasonable position for, for white, and it's about a level position, actually. It's approximately equal. It's very similar to positions that you would see out of Sicilian defense. So b4... Alternatives to e5. Um, there are several alternatives to e5, um, most of which are actually an attempt at directly refuting this plan, starting with b4 and bishop b2. The first one starts with the move c6, and the idea is to directly refute bishop b2 with the move queen b6. You put pressure on this b-pawn, and if white chooses to defend with the move a3, we play a5, putting direct pressure. And at this point, it almost seems like white would have to play a move like c3 or bishop c3, um, to try to defend this pawn. If bishop c3, we actually lose the pawn after a b4, a b4, rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, queen takes b4, something wins the pawn. So it seems like the move c3 is forced, which would block in the bishop. And if the bishop gets blocked in, clearly this is a better position for black because we've refuted white's main strategy and created a bad piece. However, there is an alternative for white. Instead of pushing the pawn up one square, we can take advantage of the misplaced black queen, and we can push the pawn up two squares. And after a captures b4, we can play this tactical concept, we can play c5, attacking the queen, and then the queen cannot actually take the pawn, because then we have a captures b4, which is a double attack against the queen and against the rook, which wins material. Because of this trap, after c5, the queen would have to retreat, in which case we could play a captures b4, and after the exchange of rooks, white's position is perfectly acceptable, because he still controls the long diagonal and he's gained some space on the queen side. The second attempt at refuting this opening directly is still the move c6, but instead of misplacing the queen, we simply choose not to misplace the queen. After bishop b2, we simply play a5 immediately. a5 immediately is a very strong move if white continues with a3, with the same concept discussed previously. We would play a captures b4, a captures b4, rook a1, bishop a1, and now queen b6. And at this point, white would have no choice. White would have to play bishop c3, which would lose a pawn to knight a6, or white could play pawn c3, in which case, again, we strategically destroyed this piece. And this is actually a success story for black. However, again, 
White has an alternative, and that alternative is an aggressive tactical reply. White can play the positional sacrifice, b5. At this point, black has two options. Black can leave this pawn here, in which case white can simply defend it with e3 or exchange it off with a move like, say, uh, b captures c6. Or black can take it on this move or on the next move with the move c captures b5. At this point, white would continue aggressively with the move e4, threatening this pawn. Notice white is starting to achieve a large lead in development here. If the pawn pushes itself, we can play a pure pawn sacrifice with a3, a captures, knight captures, massive development lead for white with a position very similar to one you would see out of a Banco Gambit, although this is a superior Banco Gambit for white because now black has several weaknesses that white can play into and white already has a large development lead. Another way that black can play this is instead of before black can try to hold the pawn, this is actually somewhat disastrous after knight c3, b4, and then knight d5 hitting the queen again. White has a huge development lead, threatening knight to c7, and this position is actually very, very difficult for black to hold on a move like, say, queen c6, which would be quite weak, d6 would probably be a little bit better in this case. A move like, say, bishop b5 creates massive amounts of problems for black to the point where it's actually very difficult to defend. You can't take, because of knight c7 check picking up the queen, you'd be forced to make another queen move, and then white can make even another development move with knight f3, which threatens another threatening move, which would threaten another move like, say, bishop b5. This position is very, very strong for white. I would say that white, in spite of being an opponent, is probably slightly better here, especially considering he can push a3 at any point and continue with another very favorable pawn sacrifice. So because those two direct refutations fail to impress, other attempts at refuting the position have been tried. Mainly, the main attempt to refute the position has been an attempt at d5, bishop b2, queen d6, a3, and simply e5. The idea behind this is simply to take the whole center without having any real downsides, unlike in other positions where you had to play a move like f6 to try to go for the middle of the board. In this situation, all you've done is misplace your queen. I would say that this position Although it's a very scary and very dangerous thing to look at from the white perspective, I would say that white's actually probably okay. And the position is probably still uh, approximately equal. Even though black gets a firm grip on the center of the board, his queen is exposed, and white doesn't have to develop in a way that puts his pieces in any real danger. White can continue with moves like e3 and c4 immediately, which will put some pressure on this misplaced queen. And it's actually somewhat awkward for black to continue his development with his queen placed on d6 and without having a clear idea of where to go. And then white can just continue developing his pieces in sort of normal and natural ways and castling and keeping this open diagonal and keeping pressure on d5 and keeping the option open to play a move like c5, making this queen feel very awkward and very misplaced. And we can eventually capture on d5, and again, we'll get a two-on-one pawn majority and everything will be fine. And the same thing is true if d captures c4, we again get this similar two-on-one pawn majority and everything will be fine. So... That leaves me to what is my recommendation against b4 for black if black wants to get the most out of the position. If black wants to get the most out of the position, I would say the most he can hope for is probably a relatively equal position, or a position where perhaps black is slightly better. And my recommendation would actually be the crazy move a5, which is interchangeable with the move e5. You could play it with e5 if you want to play something that looks a little bit less crazy, but in the end it would be the same idea after bishop b2, d6, and then say e3 or knight f3 or etc. you would play the move a5 because you want to try to gain control of the square c5. Once you gain control of the square c5 after b5, you can play this king's Indian attack formation with knight f6, g6, bishop g7, knight d7, and you're trying to get that firm grip on the square c5. In these positions, it's very important that white plays e3 and not e4 so that he can maintain that grip on c5 as well. I would say this position is approximately level, but keep in mind, you can also achieve this position by starting with the move a5, trying to get this move b5, and then playing e5 on the first couple of moves. I think that gives black the best possible chances to try to get some sort of advantage out of this position. Although this particular position, which I think can be achieved kind of by force, or this particular structure, I think is about level and offers good play for both sides. Um, that is 1b4. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.